Oh my god! Oh! Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into the GameCube classic, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Fun fact about this game, I played this game yesterday, recorded an entire video, and then realized my microphone has a mute button, which I inadvertently pressed about 10 minutes into recording, and today I get to play the game again for you from the beginning. However, I'm gonna look on the bright side of things. I actually thought this was a really cool game. I enjoyed it. And when I did play it yesterday, I kind of got stuck at points and it took me a while to get through the game and I didn't get too far. So you know what? We're just gonna go ahead and start right away here. And uh, we're gonna get as far as we can. And having played this game uh, for over an hour yesterday, really, I think today I'm gonna get even further. So. Uh, yesterday I could have said to you that I had never played this game before, but that would be a lie because now I've played it for about an hour. So whatever. It's like scouting, I guess. Um, and now we're going to play this game again. So Legend of Zelda Wind Waker here. Um, we have the little opening in the background here, which, uh, I will let you guys read if you are so interested. I'll kind of talk over mostly though, because, uh, as I discovered yesterday, you can't skip this intro, so... Uh, this is just typical Zelda backstory lore, though. It's talking about, you know, the Hero of Time, which is Link defeating Ganon. Um, I, I feel like every Legend of Zelda game exists in some kind of multiverse, because honestly, I have no idea how they even connect to one another. Like, every single Zelda game seems to have Link, Zelda, and the Triforce, and Ganon. And other than that, all bets are off. I mean, they don't even necessarily take place in Hyrule anymore. Um, so, I don't know, I, I, I don't know how any of the Zelda games connect to one another. I think in this game you are a descendant of the original Link from the first Legend of Zelda on NES. There he is, defeating Ganon. Um, however, you, this game takes place in an alternate future where Hyrule was flooded, and so this game is sort of island-based. Every, every, uh, you know, dungeon or whatever. I mean, I only saw the initial island in the first dungeon yesterday, so we'll, we'll discover today, but I'm pretty sure this is island-based. There's various islands that you explore, um, and, you know, you join up with pirates at one point and so on. So uh, it's a different Hyrule than the old NES days. Um, but this is, this is kind of a cool game. I'm excited for you guys to see this one here today. Um, I, you know, I've said many times that I'm much more of a retro gamer at heart so more of a fan of like the nes and the super nintendo era you know that was sort of the peak for me and then as things get polygonal i i, I don't have as much nostalgia uh and so for instance for the gamecube you know i didn't own a gamecube uh you know i i knew a few people who had them but i didn't really spend too much time playing gamecubes uh back in the day so like this game doesn't hold any nostalgia value for me from the perspective of having played it but one thing I think is really cool about this game, as you will see, is the cel-shaded art style. It actually looks so pleasant and nice that, I mean, even yesterday when I was playing, I was like, wow, like this game's like really cool and it's like sucking me in and, and I like it. And even though it's a game that came out in the GameCube era, um, they kind of went a little retro with the graphics, I feel. Like the cel-shaded art style makes it feel older to me in a good way. Um, so it's, I wouldn't call it like sprite art or anything like that. It's definitely not, but it does for the time it came out, it feels older, um, which makes it have oddly a bit of retro nostalgia appeal to me, despite being uh, a newer ish game. So yeah, I don't know. It's, it's kind of a cool game and I am, you know what, if there's any game I have to play twice, uh, and maybe get a little further in this game is fine. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to do it for this game but anyway the backstory here is just talking about how there was a hero of time named link he defeated ganon and now on a certain island it's customary to dress boys up uh in green <laughs> on their birthdays and send them out to fight evil so you know create a little uh, child army in the uh, image of link link in this universe is like some kind of religious figure it's it's kind of odd actually like they all revere him and stuff like that they dress like him. Um, 
I mean, they, I, I was just thinking, like, they, they kind of worship him like a cult, but... Or, or like a religion, but uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure even the most, you know, ardent Christians aren't dressing up like Jesus on their birthdays, so... It's almost, they're almost more into Link than, uh, you know, religious people are into uh, their iconographies. I don't know. Anyway, this is Link's little sister. Um, I forget her name already. I think it's Aurel, actually. Uh, big brother, she's looking for Link. Looking through her little telescope there. For some reason, seagulls have a real thing with her. Um, as I discovered yesterday, they, they always sort of swim, uh, hang around her. Here's Link just passed out. I think he's hung over, honestly. I mean, what kind of, he's just... <laughs> he's either narcoleptic or he's a drug addict, let's be honest. Nobody just passes out uh, randomly at the top of a lookout post. He also looks kind of pissed to be woken up so early. One thing I like about this game is Link has a bit of a scowl throughout the entire game. I think it's pretty funny, actually. Um, anyway, there's my sister. She found me. This is my favorite spot to gaze out at the sea. Uh, when I play with the gulls, I call it Errol's Lookout. Kind of bobbing around like odd. Like, look how unimpressed he is. But yeah, she's bobbing her head around like oddly. Um, but yeah, he's... he's so, Link is so grumpy in this game. You would think that maybe once he wakes up, he gets a little smile on his face. It doesn't happen. He's, he's grumpy the whole game. Uh, it's great. Anyway, uh, I, I guess I'm a descendant of Link. Um, I'm obviously not the same Link from The Legend of Zelda. Um, and interestingly enough, when this game does kick off, it's not Zelda I'm going to be trying to save, it's my sister. You know, spoilers, I guess. Um, but it's kind of interesting. We In this uh, opening world here, you uh, can't be damaged. Um, you can also, by the way, so that the camera controls are one thing that I found uh, a little annoying yesterday. So you use the, the C stick on the GameCube controller, but left is right and right is left. It's kind of annoying. But you can also swim if you want, which is pretty cool. This little island here looks idyllic and beautiful. Like we can just check it out real quick. Um, I remember there were like rupees to grab somewhere around here. Let's do a little bit of exploring together here. There's pigs. You can try and wrestle a pig if you want. You can go crawling under here and get some rupees. Yeah, we got rupees. Okay. We crawl our way back out of here. We just stole that man's fortune. Actually, I think we can just straight up go into his house. Hold on. Before we go home to grandma, why don't we rob our neighbors? <laughs> That's a fun thing to do when you are uh, live on an island of only like five inhabitants. Just rob your neighbors. They'll never know. Imagine, though, living in a community that was that small. I don't know. I mean, maybe some of you guys do. I don't know. I don't know everybody's... Uh, like, oh, hold on. Look how mad he is. <laughs> Look at that face. Great. Maybe some of you folks do live in, like, quite small communities, but... I mean, you know, like, being from Toronto, like, city of millions, um... You know, even knowing your neighbors is a bit of an achievement where I, in the places that I'm from. But if you grew up on a little island of, like, five people, like... Yeah, life would be very different, I imagine. Um, anyway. Uh, off to the races here. We gotta go see Grandma. Um, there's this little, little fella over here doing some fishing. Look at this little guy. Hey, buddy, what's up? Oh, Jay! Hey, is it true that if you just have a little courage and run as fast as you can, you can jump to that rock out there? Huh. Is it? Is it? Tell me! Well, I think he was giving us a tip. Thanks, little bud! Kazam! Kablamo! Kabloomy! Now the question of how do we get to that one? I don't think those ones are possible. Oops. Could we go to run? Whoa! Nope. Um, that's okay. It's a nice day for a swim. Uh, I mean, like, honestly, like, look at this little beach community. This is so nice. I wish, I wish I was here right now, honestly. Like, this is so cool. Today would be a great day for a beach day. I would totally be down for some beach. Um, this guy... Man, look how mad he looks. Look at that face! Also, I was wondering yesterday if this is the inspiration for Nintendo making Miis. You know, like, the, the Miis for their Wii system. Because this came out on the GameCube 
right? So it's like, but look at that face. That kind of looks like a me. Look at look at Link's face. That kind of looks like a me. I wonder if me's got inspired by this. But uh, I just saw a wild pig. Look at the black one there. This is perfect. My wife was just telling me, blah, 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 go grab the pig. You could also distract with bait, I guess. So basically, he's just telling you that you can, like, crawl around and be stealthy. I do not know how to grab these pigs, though. I couldn't figure it out yesterday. Like, and roll into him. Those are my only two options, buddy. All right, well, whatever. The pig's on you. I can, I can herd the pig towards you. Dude, grab the pig! It's right behind you! Oh, he's not even interested. All right, we're making the, pe the pig run out into the ocean. I wonder if we can do this, actually. Can we, can we kill a pig? Will the pig go in the water? This is a question. Get out in the water, piggy. Go for a swim. Oh, that should be some kind of achievement right there. Grab him. He's vulnerable. He's vulnerable. Okay. See, I don't know what you're supposed to do there. He wants you to grab a pig, but Link has like no interest in actually doing it. I don't know. Anyway, let's actually go back to grandma here. Uh, okay, can't walk through a bush. Um, oh yeah, so, whereas the kid on the rocks is, like, cute and endearing, this kid just has a snot hanging out of his nose. Look at that! Nintendo, what were you thinking? Nintendo. Minus one point for the Wind Waker, I say. You know, I've, I've heaped a lot of praise on this game, even just in the, the few minutes we've been playing it so far. But I'm gonna take a few points away for... Why did anyone think, you know what we need is a little boy with just snot hanging right out of his nose. That's a good thing to have in a video game. People want to see that. Uh, anyway, Grandma here is giving me my clothes. This is my birthday present, by the way. It's my birthday today. And I'm finally old enough to wear the clothes. So, <laughs> even picks things up like the original Link. That's so you know you're related to Link. Whenever you pick something up, you hold it to the sky and you get a little musical chime. So I have the hero's clothes. He does not look happy to wear them. Basically like getting socks for your birthday. It's a terrible gift. Um, it's the day you become the same age as the young hero spoken of in all the legends. You know, those legends of Zelda. Which is actually a really odd title for a series of games. Um, I'll, I'll mention that in a moment. I mean, basically just here, she's going to make me wear clothes uh, that I don't want to wear. But, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, Legend of Zelda. What an interesting title for a series of games. Because it, Zelda's not the main character, right? Like, Link is. It should be called The Legend of, Z of Link. Legend of Zelda would be like if you called a Batman comic The Legend of Robin, you know? Like, Robin's a character in it, for sure, and he's not nothing. Uh, but, I mean, I think they just called it The Legend of Zelda because it sounds cool. Like, Legend of Zelda. Like, that's really neat. Um, but again, it really should be like the Legend of Link, or the Legend of Triforce, you know? Uh, something like that. Or even the Legend of Ganon, I would accept. But Legend of Zelda doesn't re really make a lot of sense, because in all the early Zelda games, she was just, like, basically a damsel in distress. Um, in the later games here, she's, she's become a more active character. Um, and spoilers, I guess. Um, in this game, she's a pirate, even. She's not even a damsel in distress, it's Link's sister who's in trouble. So well, that's kind of something. Um, anyway, uh, various island inhabitants going about their day-to-day -day land. I'm going to kind of rush through this initial island here. Yesterday, I spent a lot more time exploring it because I, did, I didn't know what I was supposed to do or where I was supposed to go. But now that I, that I know where to go... Um, don't follow me, snot kid! What the hell? Why would they... Ew! Nintendo minus two points. That's disgusting. <laughs> They're like, we're not even gonna, we're not just gonna have a kid with snot coming out of his nose, but literally, that kid is gonna follow you around, so you won't even be able to avoid it. It's gonna be very obvious. Um, but yes, I, I, yesterday spent a lot more time kind of exploring this area, because I didn't know where to go, but this time I feel like I want to kind of get to the game faster, so we can see more of the game, so that's what we're gonna be doing. Here's my sister just hanging out with the seagulls. Boy, big brother, did grandma make that outfit for you? Uh, maybe? I don't know. It could be descendant clothes from like a thousand years ago. We do have Link's shield in our little hut, actually. That is the real shield that the original Link used. Um, anyway, she's gonna give me her most treasured belonging for my birthday. 
This is kind of such a sad birthday, like... I mean, I guess we're spoiled in, like, modern times, but, like, her- his birthday present is he gets to use her telescope for the afternoon. I don't know. I guess we're way too materialistic nowadays. We're like, if it's not an iPhone 11, sis, I don't want it. I don't want your stinking telescope. I want- I want a- a- a, a DSR-50 with a telescopic lens. Uh, anyway, when you get items, you equip them this way, thusly. And now you can use it. And we're gonna zoom in here. And there's the lady carrying her pot of water or whatever. There's a bird person. I, I do not understand who that is or what's going on. When I played this yesterday, I was like, what the heck? A bird person? What's going on? Also, the bird person, he notices something. He's our postman. I guess in the world of islands, it would make sense to, uh, have, uh, bird humanoids be the post- server- postal server people. Anyway, a giant bird flying through the sky, carrying a damsel. Um, and then a cannonball comes flying at its butt from a pirate ship. And don't worry, guys. Soon we be pirates. We're gonna join up, just like in the Goonies. Only not exactly, because in the Goonies, they never actually joined up pirates, because pirates were long dead. Whatever! Pirates, Goonies, it's all related somehow. Kablam! Oh, hit him right in the face! Okay, now she falls to her death. Her splat. He's done. But, just to make sure that her tattered corpse doesn't stink up our forest, we're gonna go up there and, uh, you know... Fish it out of, uh, the tree or whatever, wherever it landed. Whee! Oh man, that's kind of scary to drop from that high. Let's just swim over to our home. That's a more fun way to do this. So yeah, so eventually if you run out of swim power, you pass out and you wake up on the dock. So you can't die on this opening island. I don't know what happens if you try and swim away on, uh, another island or something like that. But, uh, okay, so... Um, there's a guy up there. Hello, dude! That's correct, you're a smart one. You, my friend, have just L-targeted me. Say that to someone on the street. Yo, man, you just L-targeted me. Of course, even if there's anything around the target, blah, 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 blah. This guy is... I guess you could call him Mr. Manual. He's a big giant forehead, and if you go in and talk to him, he basically says he wrote helpful things on the wall of his hut and you can read them. It's basically, instead of having a manual for this game, like in, in olden times, they just put the manual in the game and stuck it on the wall of a character's hut. But you know what, in the interest of time, that's a boring thing to do in Legend of Zelda, go and read a manual. We're gonna go in here and get trained by, with the Sword Master, and then we're gonna go try and uh, save uh, that girl who fell. Um, maybe her name... Uh, starts with a, a, a Z, ends with an A, and has an Eld in the middle. Uh, anyway, this this guy, blah, 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 I've come to train with a sword, man. Alright, teach me how to do this, bro. Did this yesterday, too. Alright, so very good. Your first lesson shall be horizontal slice. Face me and press B. That's all you have to do. Do a couple of these slashes at him, and then he's satisfied. Now, we can L-target him. Can, uh, so L-targeting is how you, like, lock on to enemies. The combat controls in this game are actually pretty good, I found, when I checked this out yesterday. Um, now you can L-target and hold forward. Uh, and you can keep thrusting at him. There we go. Oh, and he, uh, he didn't like that, though. There you go, come on, buddy. Alright, next. Hold B briefly. Build up your strength. And kablam! So you can do the spin attack. Link's classic spin attack. Very good. Uh, the parry. Okay. Whoa! Parry's kind of cool. It's like a, a counter attack. Nice try, old man. Okay, now L target jump attack. I will say, though, that besides the camera controls and the C-Stick being reversed and me not liking that, the automatic camera controls in this game are also not the best. And occasionally the camera kind of goes into a corner or, like, is obs obscured by a pot or grass or something. So 
I mean, it's not it's not to an unplayable degree, but it is a little a little annoying. I will say, as you're playing through this, so uh, you know, there's good there with every game. We got to be honest. There's some really good things about this game. There's some things that could be improved. Doesn't mean it's a bad game. Uh, in fact, I think this game is considered one of the best Legend of Zelda games of all time. Um, or actually, I think just one of the best video games of all time. I think pretty much every Zelda game is considered one of the best games of all time. Like there, the camera just... I, my face got right in the camera. That's bad camera controls right there. Um, yeah, like I feel like every single Legend of Zelda game hits that mark of like best game of all time which is a pretty crazy achievement if you think about it i mean say what you will about nintendo and i mean nintendo does make some odd choices and stuff and they don't always 100 percent agree with what they do and stuff as a business but in terms of making games you know like they have to make good games because they don't rely on third-party developers as much as like sony or xbox or whatever and they bring it you know, and like, really, it's, I mean, not, it's not just Shigeru Miyamoto. Nintendo has many skilled people working for them. But, uh, I mean, Shigeru, I mean, that guy like bats a thousand, honestly. Like, uh, even if his games aren't your style, you have to admit, like, he does a good job, man. And Nintendo as a whole does a good job. So, yeah, this game is considered one of the best games of all time. It also... <laughs> Interestingly enough, when it came out, didn't actually sell as well as, uh, you know, they were hoping. Like, I think I think it sold, uh, like, 4 million copies, which is a very successful game. But pre the previous game, uh, the previous Zelda game, had sold, like, 7 million, so it was actually less copies. And so, the sort of, quote-unquote, failure of this game caused Nintendo to change course for the Twilight Princess and make a different kind of Zelda game. That's why this one kind of stands out as cell shaded and then they kind of moved away from it. Um, but, you know, as time went on, I think people appreciated this game more. And also, like, the cell shaded graphics, I think, hold up more over time. Um, I'm pretty sure I've talked about this on my channel before, but uh, people have pointed out that an interesting thing about Nintendo is that because they're not chasing photorealism, their games do tend to be more timeless than something like, you know, a PlayStation or an Xbox game. Because whereas PlayStation and Xbox games look good when they come out, over time, you know, the photorealism uh, doesn't sort of always stand up. And, you know, you look at games that tried to be photorealistic in, like, 2010, they don't look that good by today's standards. But you look at a game like this, which is a 20-year-old game, by the way. Pretty sure it's about, about that. Um, and it's like, it looks like a game that maybe would be released today, and, like, the fact that it's, it's supposed to be cartoony. So the fact that it is cartoony, um, it feels a bit timeless. Which is, you know, one, as I say that, it's one thing I think maybe why I love pixel graphics so much and why I feel like I still love Super Nintendo and Nintendo games. Because, like, even though their graphics aren't photorealistic, they were never meant to be. And, like, pixel graphics are almost more timeless than attempts to be photorealistic that aren't perfect. Um, oh, man, we just dominated those guys. Oh, there's still guys here? Hello! Hello! I wanna slam attack this guy. Boom! Slam attack! Slam attack! Oh, nice try. They can't even touch me, man. I'm all over the place. The thing that sucks is after this intro island, we're actually gonna lose our sword right off the bat. <laughs> but yeah, like, you look at a well-made Super Nintendo game, and the graphics, honestly, I feel like today are just as enjoyable as they were when they came out. Uh, but you look at like an early polygonal game, and again, maybe I'm biased because my peak nostalgia was like Super Nintendo era. Um, she's not impressed with this getup, by the way. But early polygonal looks quite rough to me, and I feel like it doesn't hold up as nicely as like sprites or even cell shaded graphics like this. So yeah, I don't know. Time will tell, I guess. Maybe in 30 years, people will look at this and it will look like absolute trash, but whatever today it looks good anyway a pirate is coming up here he's apologizing he's say he's telling her what happened a bird caught you a bird dropped you she looks pissed too everyone in this game kind of scowls she by the way is not doesn't give link any credit for rescuing her you just like abandon him he sucks link's like what the f man 
What the flip? I came all the way up here just to rescue you and I get nothing? Ahoy, big brother! Oh my god, sister, do not come any closer. That bridge is definitely... <laughs> go... Go home! Don't... Why are you up here on the mountain? This is... No, this is not a safe place to be! There's a giant hole in the bridge, too. Um, and also there's this giant nightmare bird. Which... Honestly... This bird kind of reminds me of the windfish. You guys remember from Link's Awakening, the windfish? He was like a, a big whale that had all sorts of interesting colors and stripes on him. I wonder if that bird has a relation to the windfish. Link just runs for his sister off a cliff because <laughs> he's stupid. Thank God. Uh, I guess her name is like Terret or something like that. But spoilers, it's Zelda. Um, I mean, I, I, yesterday when I was playing this, I kept referring to her as Zelda because I was pretty sure that's who she was. But then it kind of occurred to me that if you did never play this game before and you wanted the full surprise experience, the twist that she's Zelda, I kind of ruined it. But I mean, I guess I just ruined it again today. So I'm, I'm the worst. I apologize. If you were, if you were saving this one, you know, if you're saving Legend of Zelda, if, you know, maybe like... 2026 or 2029 you know you had it you had it earmarked for like a game you wanted to play by the 2030s then i guess i spoiled it for you but you know what can you do you, you watch these let's plays and you just open yourself up to spoilers guys uh anyway blah 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 bird person is here again what up dude um he's basically at this point the pirates do not want to help me. But Bird Person is kind of guilting them into him. He's saying, yo, look. If you guys hadn't come here, this kid's sister wouldn't have get stolen. None of this bad stuff would have happened. It's all your fault. Therefore, it's up to you to be honorable, like pirates are known to be, in order to, um, you know, help this kid save his, save his sister. Um... Also, the hairstyle of this guy leaves something to be desired. This is like, he's wearing like judge hair, you know, like the old like horse wigs that like judges would wear that I think they still do in England because for some reason that you need to wear a horse hair wig in order to distribute justice, turns out. Uh, a very odd, very odd precedent. It's interesting what kind of traditions like take hold you just kind of linger around like why do judges wear big robes like why besides the fact that it's tradition what purpose does it serve now can, like can we update that Could they wear a suit maybe uh, i guess i don't know the, the robes are like symbolic or something uh, anyway his sister has been taken to the forsaken uh, fortress oh man the one thing this game, another another thing I'm going to dock a point for Nintendo for is not giving you any way to speed up the text. In old Zelda games, you could just hold the A button and it would go zoop, 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 and the text would all just zoom by. But this one is like, there's nothing you can do. Every single button does absolutely nothing. Oh no, don't talk to her again. Dear God. So she says that we can't come unless we get a sword of so or a shield of some kind. And so we're going to go steal our shield from our Gam Gam. And also, before we go, we're going to steal some money from the, the garden. The sweet garden money. Also, I think there's some stuff on the... Yeah, there's like a gem up there, too. I'm not quite sure how to get that one. Maybe... Let's see. Could we climb this? I'm experimenting here! Oh, God. Climb back up. Let's see. Climb, oh God, climb up here, climb up here. Can I get on the roof somehow? Like there's stuff on the roof. Ah, I have no idea, okay, whatever. It doesn't really matter. We don't really need rupees today. Yesterday I didn't even find a spot where you could spend rupees. So, hello, Graham Graham. Uh, Ariel's been taken by a giant bird in the sky, not to worry. I'll get right on it. Oh, the shield! The shield that I came here to get. Grams, what'd you do with it? He doesn't want me to take it. Jay. Yes? What is it, Grandma? Is this what you're looking for? 
sweet shield. Why is he like so stunned by the fact that she has it? You know what they kind of have facial expressions like? The characters from uh, Team America World Police, that uh, like puppet video movie that uh, was made by the South Park creators. Like when he has his mouth open, is his surprise? I feel like he's a, a marionette puppet, like like in Team America, like right now, you know. Anyway, she's been kidnapped. It's been going around. If you're paying attention to the bird person speech, young girls with pointy ears have been kidnapped repeatedly right now. It's sort of a bit of a problem that's happening. So, um, you know, it's bound to happen eventually, I guess. But not every young girl has a, an awesome brother who's going to, you know, get her back. You know, one thing I did not explore yesterday was this little, uh, this little boat here. What is this? Oh, hello. What's up, dude? Oh, a customer. Welcome to Beetle's Shop Ship. I deal pretty much in anything and everything. Do you have anything you don't need? Oh, interesting. So we can actually, uh, bait bag. This holds bait. Very last one. Uh, you can't buy bait if you don't have a bait bag like this. All-purpose bait, and you can't buy this anywhere else, only here. I'm serious now. It's your last chance. Bye, bye, bye. Interesting. All right, well, I will buy a bait bag from you, sir. <laughs> it's like a pig's head. Sure, why not? Let's spend some rupees. Yeah, we got a bait bag. You can keep plenty of bait in this convenient satchel. Uh, it has eight pouches for storing bait. Okay, cool. And uh, I'm going to make a member's card just for you. When you buy lots of things and build up your points, something good will happen. Oh, that's interesting. Sort of like a, uh, a Subway sub uh, card that they used to have. You buy 10 subs and your 11th is free. All right. Uh, blah, blah, blah. What else has he got? I'm going to buy some bait too. Why not? I'll buy it. Huzzah! Gourmet pet food the moment you put it down. Three portions. Choose your bait bag. All right. All right, all right. Let me skip the rest of that dialogue. I have two points. This is such a scam for just getting me to buy more things. I'm going to buy your pear, too. Why not? This nightmare pear with a face carved in it. This special bait allows you to take control of seagulls. Oh, interesting. I didn't know any of this yesterday. Didn't figure any of this out. It's good that we came back to the game. All right. Bye-bye. See you, dude. Get a shirt. All right, off we go. Let's uh, start the pirate life up here. It is time to say goodbye to Introductory Island and say hello to a life of being a rapscallion. Let's go. Let's do it. It's, nice, it's awfully nice of the pirates to actually help me out here. <laughs> they have a gong. And then off we go. Yahoy. It's a cool ship. I'll give you that too. I think eventually Link gets his own ship in this game. I feel like, oh God, the snot. Minus another point, Nintendo. You're down to negative three. <laughs> Stop it. How did somebody think this was a good idea? It's not kid. Put him in your game. No, thanks. Just have him be a little kid who's running around. Why does it matter? What is Link surprised at? His grandma is saying goodbye. He feels guilty for leaving. <laughs> Bye, grandma. I can't believe she actually cared about me. How much longer is this going on? Don't you think you have an estimate? Are you sure you shouldn't just quit right now? Seriously, think about it. He's not impressed by his sentimentality. I can just tell you're going to get more sentimental from here on out. There's still time, you know. Are you sure we shouldn't just turn around and take you back to your island? Link's like, don't toy with me, woman. We're off to grand adventures. We lived uh, many years on that island. Getting drunk and passing out in the lookout spot. But now it's time to train for the pirate's life. So if you talk to her, she just tells you to go into the bowels of the ship here and um, train with Nico. 
who is right over here. And they have this very elaborate gym set up in the bowels of the pirate ship. And he wants to train you on how to press switches. That's one of his, one of the many things you must learn if you want to be a pirate. Learn how to press switches. Just like that. Then you have to learn how to swing on ropes. The other thing. Well, jumping, I guess, comes first. And then swinging. Oh god, I wish I could skip this text. What is it with game developers and putting unskippable stuff in their game? You know, like, you're like, oh man, this text is just so important, we can't let people skip it. Or like, this cutscene matters so much, people can't skip it. If I ever make a game, guys, skippable cutscenes, skippable dialogue. I mean, the thing is, even if this dialogue's important, the first time you play through the game, yeah, you don't want to skip it. But if a player skips it, it's kind of on them. So, you know, personal responsibility. But the other thing is, like, when you go back and you replay a game and you have to sit through these, like, unskippable dialogue scenes, unskippable tutorials, it's a real pain. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's exacerbated because I just played this yesterday. So for me, it's very fresh. I'm like, I really don't need to hear your dialogue again, dude. Um, but, you know, even if I own this game and I was, like, uh, playing it, uh, oh, God, uh, playing it again, um, I would like to skip some of this training dialogue because it's kind of useless to hear more than once, you know? So, whoa, God, there we go. Man, I did so bad at this yesterday. I was in this section for, like, a while. There we go. But look at this, I one-shotted it. See, maybe it was a blessing in disguise to actually have to replay this game twice. Because we're going to get further, a little, at least a little further today. That'll be fun for you guys to see more of this game. I won't be, I don't appear totally incompetent. Um, so now he's giving me a prize, because I got to the other side. Uh, I'll tell you what, you can have the treasure in that chest there. It's your reward for the great and generous Nico. Thanks, dude. Sweet. Um, wait. wait. Hold on. Does this guy have peg legs? Is his legs pegs? No, no, they're not. Anyway, um, alright. Oh, <laughs> bonk into the chest. Kind of looked like that guy had peg legs for legs. Like he didn't have feet, it was just pegs. But I guess he just had really skinny feet. The spoils bag! You can keep gear you get from your or items. And hold eight types of items. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Alright. Jay, we've reached the Forsaken Fortress. Hurry! Alright, let's go. He's grumpy when he stands, and when he runs, his mouth goes open. And interesting. Anyway, let's just uh, run over here. Climb up this ladder. And let us start our first dungeon. Which, as you will see, honestly... <laughs> is an interesting idea for a dungeon but also not my favorite at all i don't know why they made i don't know why they made this dungeon have the mechanic that it has but you guys will see soon enough it's another point off nintendo uh but i'm hopeful that once we pass this dungeon things will get uh better so anyway let's go check out this forbidden fortress Oh, there it is. Wow, this is a high lookout post. Nintendo really wanted to, uh, really wanted to impress upon you just how high they had made things in their games. Because they made, you know, climbing, they're like, look how high of a ladder you can climb. Only on the GameCube. Don't tell me you were playing some stupid game for treasure, were you? Well, I won't tell you that, but that is what happened. There's something you need to see. Have a look over there. That's the cursed isle known as the Forsaken Fortress. Like Alcatraz, man. Pirate Alcatraz. There are all sorts of strange rumors about this place. What I do know is that uh, long ago it used to be a hideout for a no good group of pirates we used to compete with. They were just small time. Now the place looks pretty dangerous. And uh, there's the bird. And over there, seagulls. 
which can only mean that my sister is captured in there. Have you ever seen so many seagulls flock like that before? I'll bet you anything that's a place where they've got your sister locked up. But it looks like the whole place is under really tight guard. This won't work. We better be we'll be spotted before we get anywhere. Hmm. We what do we do now? Oh, I have an idea. Wink. It's like a Lucille Bluth extra long awkward blink. They've stuffed him in a barrel against his will. He can't get out, and they're going to catapult him into the fortress. Don't worry, this will get you in or kill you. Either way, our job is done. <laughs> As pirates, we do this all the time. Alright, launch him, boys. When you get there, tell him Zelda sent- Look at the frown! <laughs> I love his little frowns and grimaces. You get to hell, tell him Zelda sent ya. <laughs> the pirates are waving. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh good shot though we almost made it there goes our sword and there we go nearly dead an inch away from death we'll say alright now the forsaken fortress so your mission here is to climb up the fortress get to your sister it's actually not too hard, but here's the thing. This is a stealth mission. You don't have a sword. It's You can fight guys, but it is uh, it, it's complicated. You have to kind of steal their weapon. Um, and every time you get caught, you're in stealth mode. Every time you get caught, you get put in a jail cell and you have to break out. Oh, and, and she snuck this necklace into your pocket so she can talk to you. Uh, so that's kind of cool. But, I mean, we'll, we'll, I think I'll be able to fly through this pretty quick. But yesterday, honestly, I probably spent like 45 minutes in this fortress. And it got to the point where, like, I was almost at the end. And then I would get caught. And I'd have to go right back to the jail cell at the beginning. And it got really frustrating. Because I was like, Nintendo, like, you know, I get that, you know, stealth is kind of a cool idea in video games. But only in small doses. I think if there's too much stealth in a game, it just becomes a pain in the keister. Because here's the thing is like action is like active. The player is like interacting uh, with, you know, characters and fighting and stuff. But a lot of stealth, you know, involves just moving around slowly. So not going, not being able to go through the, the game at the pace you want. Having to pause and wait for things, which is not fun. Like just sitting here and waiting, you know, is one of the least fun things you can do in games. And then when you fail, you have to redo huge pieces of the map that you've already done. It just sort of feels like a whole level based on stealth is kind of a dumb idea. I'm going to say it. I don't think this is a very good idea for a level. It's it's interesting. Like, okay, I, I take it back. It's an interesting idea for a level, but there should be far less consequences for getting caught. Like with, with you know, Metal Gear Solid, um, you know, Solid Snake. When he got caught in a stealth level, he wasn't always transported to a jail cell at the beginning of the game, and then you have to go back through the level. It's like guys would just come and try and kill him, and his solution was to try and find a hidey spot. So it's like stealth has done well in Metal Gear Solid. There's there's a cost to getting caught, but you can get caught as many times as you want, and it slows you down a bit, but it turns it into an action sequence, which is fun, um, and then you can like undo the consequences of being caught by just hiding for a bit. And this one feels far more punishing when you do get caught. So, um, yeah, I, I, uh, you know, feel like yesterday I didn't have fun in this fortress. Today, because I know what I'm doing, I think we'll be able to fly through. But I do just want to say I don't think this is a great idea for a level. It's just it's not implemented the way I think you should implement a stealth level. So, again. You know, little criticisms of, of Wind Waker here, despite the fact that I think this is a cool game. Little criticisms. Uh, but I don't know, like, maybe you really enjoyed the stealth the stealth section back when you played it. Um, let's hammer this guy with the peg leg of a piano here. You're going down, buddy. Oh, where are you running to? Nothing can save you now, man. Come here, man. Go down. How dare you, man, uh, spotlights. Throw his peg leg away. Alright. And what is this? What is this? I remember this. How do I... 
Can I pick this up? Wait, hold on. Pick up this. Can we attack this thing? Yeah. Boom! Oh, rupees and stuff! A joy pendant. Um, that guy was wearing a joy pendant? Hmm. He's, he's the more, uh... He was one of the, the guards who was sort of... He had, a, he had a sensitive side. He had a sensitive side. Okay, now... So what you can do is go ahead and disable all these, um... Disable all these uh, spotlights by beating up the guards who, who man them. Um, and by doing that, you make your life a bit easier. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So yeah, you can, uh, you can hold your shield up like I was doing and block his attacks. And then he, uh, you know, drops his weapon. Then you pick it up and beat him to death with it. And also throw these at him. And you can pick up one of these and you can wail on him. Oh yeah, there you go, buddy. There you go, buddy. There you go, buddy. Little elf killed kid showed up and beat his beat his brains in with a piano stick. <laughs> All right, two down. There's one more over there. Uh, best way to get over there, probably to go back down. Yeah, we go back down over this way. Then go through these. Oh God! Oh, I wasn't paying attention. I just walked off a cliff. That was foolish. Um, oh my god. There we go. Um, so we want to go... Kind of up here? Here somewhere. They can hide in barrels, just like metal. Just, just like solid snake, you know? Just a box, just a barrel. Um, we want to... Oh, there's a chest I didn't even open that was right here. What did I find? More rupees? Oh, a compass. You can see where things are hidden in the dungeon. Press up to use your map. Yes, yeah, so if you press up on the D-pad, you get a little map here. Kind of see where you are. Um, so we want to grab this rope, swing over here. Head on back outside and beat up a few more guards. Then we almost have these uh, spotlights cleared, actually. Pretty good. Um, yeah, I think we can go just up here. Yeah, here we go. So you get a little tip when your controller vibrates and you see that A thing. Um, and she basically just tells you go up there and uh, block his attacks and he'll drop his weapon and then you can uh, beat him up. So, yeah. I, I mean, I guess I, I appreciate that they're weaning you into combat. You don't have your sword. But it does kind of feel like I just trained with my sword. Why would you take it away? <laughs> so, just a weird choice for a first dungeon. You don't have your sword. You have to do stealth. And if you do get caught, they send you to, uh, you know, like a, a prison cell where you have to, like, break out. In fact, we should get caught just so you guys can see the prison cell. Or maybe it's a waste of time. You know what? It's a waste of time. You can uh, Google it if you want to see. It's it's really nothing all that special. It's just, uh, you know, a room and you just move a, a vase and crawl out uh, the back of it and then you're free. You know, I don't know. It's it's fine, but it's, just, it's at the beginning of the level. So if you're like right near the end and you get caught, it really does suck to have to go back. Any more joy pendants? These, these Moblin guys are very joyful creatures, you know? Um, now... Okay, just let go. It's fine, kid. Now, I think at this point, we have free reign of the castle, so... Let's just take a bit of damage to fall down here. Oh, we didn't even take damage. Look at these sweet rupees. Grab some of these bad boys. We'll use this to buy more bait. Go. Sweet. All right, now I th think we want to go through this door. I actually kind of forget now how to get uh, further. But there's only so many places we can go. So... Is this it? Wait, where am I? I feel lost. Um... Huh? I actually don't think I was here yesterday. 
Oh, weird. Okay. Can I go back over here? Is this a one-way door? This looks like a one-way door. Open. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. Um... Wear one of these. Wait. Wait, what? There's a guy over there who will catch you if he sees you. There we go. So they, they do have guards and stuff. So we turned out the uh, spotlights, but there's still these guys who will try and catch you. I mean, maybe we'll get caught and you'll get to see it. A lot of tension in the air right now. Don't mind me, I'm just a barrel. Just a harmless, defenseless barrel. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god, they're everywhere. I kinda- I kinda pincered myself between two guards here. Look how flabby his bottom lip is, too. That's disgusting. Here, look at this guy. The disgusting, flabby bottom lip. Oh my god. How does he not notice me sniffing the ground? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, he's walking away. I think they're both walking away. Now's my chance. Sneak! 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 Okay, go! Get out of here! Where are we? Is this where I want to be? Um... Hmm. Interesting. There's bats and stuff. Sleeping. Mm -hmm. I wonder what's down there. Hmm. I wonder if we could set sail on that piece of pirate ship there. Uh, I'm gonna try and sneak by these guys. I think I totally went the wrong way. Gonna walk right by this guy. Don't mind me, just a barrel slowly waddling its way to victory. Uh, alright. And what do we got going on in here? Wait, what is that? Oh my god! It's a laser pig face. There's a treasure chest right here, though. That I want. What is this? Huzzah! Yellow rupee. Worth 10 rupees. Not too shabby. Is that it? The yep. yellow pig face almost lasered me. Can't see what I'm doing here. Let's get to high ground and look around. Um, oh, there's a door right over there. Okay, let's just run through it real quick. And we are really far away from where we need to go. Okay, so that helped nothing. Oh, that was an interesting little detour. Definitely part of the level that I did not notice yesterday. Um, okay, so let's uh, actually get through this level now. Man, I actually have to remember like where to go. I don't. Hon I honestly don't really remember where to go. I think maybe we just kind of like run our way up here and then I want to yeah, I think I just go this way I think this this dungeon is like a big a big circle yeah I can like grab onto that oh god look like I missed it go through here And yeah, I think, okay, I think if we just keep going forward, we'll get to the end here. Might be another rope or two to swing on. Yeah, there we go. Yep. Go, yep. go. There we go. Not too, not too hard when, when you got skills like me. Not to brag or anything like that. All right. Ah, yes. Okay, I do remember this part. Look at these guys. Okay, get a handy barrel here. Waddle our way to victory. If they're looking at you, they will sound the alarm. So you kind of have to, like, move quickly. Go behind their backs. Oh, God, that other one over there. Oh, he doesn't even notice me. Go! Run, Link, run! Freedom! See, like, it doesn't seem like you got, like, it's that long, but if you did get caught around now, it'd be a pain to go right back to the beginning. Like, it just, it just wastes your time. 
I feel like that's that's the thing in games that does get the most frustrating. I mean, it was true back in old NES games when like you die at, at the end near the end of a level and you have to redo the whole level. Like that was always a pain as well. Um be very cautious here. This guy caught me a few times yesterday. In fact, at one point I even put my controller down like right here because I just had to wait and I didn't want to accidentally press a button. And when I put my controller down, it pressed a button and I came out of the barrel and it was a big, uh, big panic. Uh, it's such a shame I don't have that foot. I mean, I have the footage, but not any of the audio, so. Oh God, he caught me. No, I thought he wouldn't be able to see me. All right, well, I guess you're going to get to see the jail cell after all. So see, we were right near the end of the level and now we're in here. And you have to, you know, move this thing. Uh, crouch in here. You kind of crawl your way out. But yeah, now we have to do that whole section again. And again, it, it just kind of exists to waste time. Especially in a stealth level where sort of the premise is that you have to move slowly be patient and wait. It's like, oh, it's so frustrating to mess this level up because it's like every time you mess it up, it's like, you're like, okay, I guess I have to go even slower. And then you mess it up again. You're like, okay, I guess I have to go even slower. And you're just like watching, you're wasting more and more time. It's like, but when you play video games, you want action. You want to be able to fight guys. You want, if a, if a guard sees you and tries to capture you, you want a way to fight back. And this level just doesn't give it to you. So, yeah, I honestly feel like this is a silly level. I, you know. It's interesting because I really do think this game is is cool. Even from the just having seen the first island, I want to see more of it. I feel like there's going to be cool fights and cool bosses and stuff. But this level, why did Nintendo do this? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you folks watching are, like, really enjoy these stealth levels and I'm just super impatient, but... I just find like in any game, once you're going over the same part, like three, four, five times, it's tedious. Um, and I think a lot of game de designers have realized that. And so in modern games, there's checkpoints, you know, like I, I feel like another way of doing this would have been to every time you enter a room, set up a checkpoint. And then if you fail, just go back to the beginning of that room. Like that would be okay. I'd be fine with that. I don't mind redoing a stealth part so that, you know, I do it properly, but just don't put me back to the beginning of the level. I mean, even though it just takes like 30 seconds to go through again, it's a pointless 30 seconds. I get nothing out of it. The game developers get nothing out of it. Why are you wasting my time? In those 30 seconds, they add up, man. They add up. I got places to be. I don't have extra 30 seconds lying around my day. Just, you know, do whatever. Seems like when he rolls, he moves faster, actually. So, here we go. This time, I am putting my controller down, just like I did yesterday. I'm putting it down very gently, though, so I don't actually press anything. And now, the joy of stealth gameplay. You don't even have to hold your controller. The gameplay is so intense. Okay, pick up your controller and walk for a bit. But don't walk too fast. Don't try and do too much or you'll get caught. Okay. Oh, okay. Put your controller back down. Oh, maybe you can walk a little bit more. Go, 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 go. Okay, we did it. <laughs> oh, man. I feel like I'm going loopy because of playing this stealth stuff so much, but, like, I don't know. Am I wrong? Am I being a jerk here? But, like, I don't know. This game ruined me on stealth yesterday, apparently. Uh, yeah, anyway, so you crawl around over here to get past this part here. If you don't know this, you go down that ladder and then you have to do that whole part again. So as fun as it was to sit in a barrel and not hold the control, you gotta do that again. Which is even, even more time you gotta spend going through the same parts over and over. 
I don't know. I don't know, guys. I, maybe the cell shading isn't what led to this game not having great sales. It was the choice of first castle here. <laughs> uh, all right, we are almost at the end, though. Thankfully. We're about to get our sword. Look at this. Our sword is sitting right next to a moblin who never fought to actually pick it up. Oh, God. Like, he was sleeping on the job or something. He was just... It never occurred to him, like, hey, maybe I should grab that sword that's just sitting there. All right, dude. Boom. You want more? I'll give you more. It's called... A link attack. You got linked, son. You got linked. Just stay down, kid. Hey, he didn't have a joy pendant. What a grump. Can we pick up his sword, by the way? Oh, we to oh my god! Wait, look at this thing. This thing is a beast. Oh, that's cool. It's cool that you can, like, pick up other swords and weapons. That's actually very unique. I, I haven't... I don't think of any Zelda games we can do that. Besides, like, more modern ones, obviously. But I guess it started... Had to start somewhere. So it started here. All right, you guys ready for an ultimate boss fight? Here it goes. You think we're about to save... Oh, it looks like Zelda over there. Our sister and Zelda. Oh, psych, that's not Zelda. Again, Zelda turns out to be the pirate girl. Spoilers! <laughs> Link's like, I hear something, though. <laughs> oh, here comes the boss fight! Actually, just kidding. There's no fight to be had. The bird just eats you. You think I'm joking, but I'm not. <laughs> there we go. We're in his mouth, and off we go. See, there's no fight. Kind of weird. I assumed there'd be a boss fight at the end of the first dungeon, but nope. However, there's about to be a little bit of a twist. Not to set you up, and you know, not to be like this is a disappointing part of the game. There is a bit of a twist here, because look who the bird takes us to. That almost looks like Ganon himself. Look at him in his ninja Ganon robes. Ganondorf. Oh, he says, "Get rid of him." <laughs> the end. Actually, I don't know what happens after this because I realized my uh, mic wasn't working at this point. And I turned off the game. I, th we're now going in blind. So Link is floating in the ocean. Good for him. He's very buoyant. And he always lands back down. Hey. Jay. Jay. Hello? Wake up. Jay. Who is it? Pull yourself together, Jay. Um. Hello? Where am I? I'm floating on a, a little ship here. Somebody saved me. That was nice of whoever it was. Well, you've come to your senses yet? Whoa, the boat itself! You were surprisingly dull-witted. Whoa! <laughs> Did I startle you? I suppose it's only natural, it's as wide as the world is. I am the only boat upon it who can speak the words of men. I'm king of the red lions, do not fear, blah blah blah. Jay, I've been watching you since you went to the Forsaken Fortress to rescue your sister. Understand how your desire to protect your sister could have given her the courage to fiercely stand up to anything, but uh, such a bold attempt was foolhardly, foolhardy. I suppose you saw him, the shadow that commands the monstrous bird. His name is Ganon, obviously. Ganon is like Link's Bowser. He's just always the one causing trouble. He obtained the power of the gods, attempted to cover the, the land in darkness, was ultimately sealed away by the very power he hoped to command. He's the very same Ganon, the Emperor of the Dark Realm, the ancient legend to speak of. I do not know why the seal of the gods has failed. But now that Ganon has returned, the world is once again being threatened by his evil magic. Tell me, Jay, do you still wish to save your sister from him? Nah, I'm over it. Um, and will you do anything to save her? Yes. All right. Well, in that case, I shall guide you as we go forward, advising you on what you should do and where you must go. Ganon cannot be defeated by human hands, let alone by what little strength you possess. 
key to defeating Ganon is locked away. Great power, blah, blah, blah. We have to go through various dungeons, get powered up, and then we can fight Ganon. We depart the Great Sea. Ah, but I am getting ahead of myself. Okay, this is actually a bit embarrassing for me to admit, but although I am in need of a boat that possesses the power of speech, I still need have no sail. Boat with no sail cannot set seas. I brought you to the far east, dark gaze of the Forsaken Fortress on this isle. is a town of merchants who deal in a wide variety of goods. If you search hard enough, surely you can find one who will sell you a sail. I'm sorry to ask you this, but without a sail, uh oh. This guy's asking us for money. This is like Con Artist 101. Buy me a sail and I'll help you save your sister from an evil wizard. Like, definitely a con. Uh, remember, there's no time to play. Come back here immediately as soon as your errands are done. All right. Got to do a bit of light shopping before we uh, actually set sail to save our sis. So before we set sail, so we have some items here. So in our satchel, we have the joy pendants. I actually forget what joy pendants do, but I guess let's equip them and we will find out. So anyway, this is our first island, the Windfall Island. What the heck? Uh, there's like some sassy boys and sassy ladies hanging out on the island. Little kids. All right, let's see if we can find a sail. In fact, actually, in the interest of time, just because we do, you know, you, you would normally explore and stuff like this. We've been playing this for quite a while. I do want to get to like some kind of dungeon or something. I'm going to quickly look something up online about where we need to go to buy a sail. Okay, so we need 80 rupees, which is a little bit of a problem. And I think we're just looking for a merchant in town over here. Yeah, like obviously like one of the joys of playing like these kinds of games with like very interesting worlds, is, like talking to the different characters, like learning things, figuring stuff out, exploring towns and such. But for us, be really, you know, I mean, rather than spending our time doing that, I'd rather spend our time, um, you know, playing a dungeon or something like that. But I thought I knew where I was going. Look at this gang of kids. Uh-oh. What, what do you kids want from me? You gonna rob me? This town is our turf. The turf of the world. Famous killer bees. Don't mess with us. Buzz buzz. That's actually pretty funny. Um, where the heck do I go, though? Yeah, this guy's, like, dancing in front of a, a grave. Oh, look, it's a disco stew. Like, he's he's having a party here. I don't even want to bother to talk to him. Uh, I cannot find where to go to buy this sale here. Also, I still have not solved the problem of being four rupees short. Which, again, is a problem. Hmm, maybe we can rob this place. You little weasel! Uh-oh! We smashed one of his exotic pots. Thank you so much for coming into my home and breaking my high-priced vases. If you break any more, I assure you that you shall not let it go lightly. Not at all. I shall require compensation. Uh-oh, I think he took a rupee? Or no, he didn't yet. Okay, well, I'm not gonna break your stuff, dude, but... Seriously, I need money. I need cash. Okay, apparently one of the things you can do... ...is save a prisoner, dude and get some cash out of him. I think there's at least five rupees we can get by doing this. So we're gonna go ahead and save you, bro. Hmm. I mean, this guy just looks suspicious as, as hell. I mean, looks like he's in some kind of gang. Look at his facial tattoos and stuff. The green hat scallions. Um, goodness, did you feel my telepathy? That's why you saved me, isn't it? Isn't it? Don't worry. Look, he's got that clock, like Flava Flav, hanging off his uh, neck there. This guy is all about the thug life. Tingle is my name. I've been looking for you. That's just my street name, though. I've been looking for you and your kind. I too long to be one of the fairy folk. And yet I was mistaken of some kind of troublemaker for putting a gat in somebody's 24. I don't know. I don't know what street lingo is. He, he iced somebody, basically. <laughs> This guy's in for murder one, man. He did a he did a sale buy. Um, can you rescue poor Tingle from this place? Yes, I can. Do we just open the door? 
Um, if you help me, I will give you a fabulous present. Please, Mr. Fairy, rescue poor Mr. Tingle. All right, Mr. Tingles. Um, hey, it looks like there's a button over here. Good thing the pirates taught me the secret of the buttons. Smashing these for rupee purposes. There you go. Very secure jail you've got going on here. No guards or anything. Just, uh, nobody presses button that lets the, the prisoners out. And he walks funny, too. Um, here's Tingle's heartfelt gift. Thank you. And he, look, he's standing and, like, wiggling his buttocks. Minus another point, Nintendo. Why? Why? Why introduce weird Japanese stuff just for the sake of it? Tis odd. Tingle, tingle. All right, Kumpla. There was nothing this weird in the original Legend of Zelda, I will, I will say. Legend of Zelda gets weirder the more time goes on. Oh my god, he gave me a Game Boy Advanced? The Tingle Tuner. You need a Game Boy Advanced. Oh wow, that's cool. So you can connect your GBA to your GameCube? The socket 2-3, set the Tingle Tuner. Wow, that's... Wow, that's really neat. I wish, I wish I could do that. Um, I'm really curious on what that actually does. Um, blah, blah, blah. And off he goes. Um, ah, I was forgetting something important. Oh, Mr. Fairy, you want to come to my island, don't you? Don't you? Don't you? Sure. You got Tingle's chart. What kind of chart could it be? Head out to the sea and press up to check the charts. Cool. So now we can, uh, figure out where we need to go on the maps. That's very helpful. Don't ever forget it. Bye, dude. Good luck with your gang. See ya. Alright, now I think in his cell here, we might be able to find a couple of rupees. Oh my god, there's a rupee in there. Yes. Ah, oh, 81! Sweet. We just barely have enough to, uh, to get this, uh, get this sale. Alright. Now, figuring out where the heck... Oh, another rupee. We're gonna have two rupees left over. Cha-ching! I okay, that's all there was. All right, now we still have to figure out where to buy this damn sail. All right, this guy is the guy who will sell us sails. I totally missed him the first time through. My story's a strange one. I came across the cursed seas from land far away. Blah, blah, blah. But dear me, as I traveled, a terrible storm descended and tore my ship to beats. To beats. Uh, from the look of you, blah, 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 blah. How does 80 rupees sound? I'll buy it. Yes, yes, thank you very much. I have received precisely 80 rupees for it. I don't even know what I bought. I think I bought the sail. Uh, please take that. You got the boat sail. All right, I don't need your life story, buddy. I was just here to buy a sail. Um, all right, see you later, man. He's like, that kid's a sucker. He only has a sail, not a boat. I'm like, that guy's a sucker. He just sold me a sail for 80 rupees. Win-win, we both think we got away with something. Right now, where was my boat? <laughs> uh oh, where, where, where was my boat? I actually don't remember. Oh, it was over here. Okay, good. Actually, I think it's on my map. Here we go. We got a sail, man. So let's sail, man. Press A to climb aboard. Set sail. Okay. I'm kind of skipping all the instructions. Nah, I, I should actually read these. Uh, set the sail you got to one of the buttons and press it. The sail will catch uh, and will head in that direction. Use to steer. Uh, you can always press A to put away the sail. Try it when you want to adjust your speed. Okay, okay, I think I understand. Um, when you are out in the sea with few landmarks to go by, you will be at the mercy of your sea chart. I've marked the places where we should currently be headed. Okay, get lost the sea, press up. Cool. Now a westerly wind blows. Hop in and let's carry us to the east. Okay, so we go in. We set our sail to one of the buttons. We hop hop in here. And then we off we go. There we go. So we can turn into the wind if we want, but I guess we go slow. So we want to go dead east. To the unexplored sector. This is actually really cool. That's the Forsaken Fortress. Oh, we can even go to our original island. Oh, that's cool. Huh, okay. Let's sail the seas. Um, are we headed in the right direction? We are not. I need to learn how to read a compass. There we go. 
Now we're going the right direction. All right, cool. Look at this. I'm a pirate, guys. I'm not a pirate. I'm a sailor. I sail in the high seas. It's pretty cool, actually. Pretty fun. It feels like a huge world to explore. Uh, because there's all this sea to explore. And we're bobbing around on the waves and stuff. This is awesome. I said today felt like a good day for a beach day, but this feels like an awesome day for sailing. I... Only ever been sailing on a boat like a handful of times in my life, but yeah, like this is great. Whoa! <laughs> Just blow by those buoys. Um. Oh, we we still have a ways to go. Like there's islands to explore too. Like, I want to take a little detour and just see what's over at this island over here. I know we're supposed to go to that one. That's probably where the fortress is, and we will, and we will. We'll do that today. But I kind of want to see what's going on at this one here, because this is a lot closer. So look at this. A little island to discover here. Wow, this would be so fun to actually, like, sail, sail around and, uh, like, just go up to islands and stuff that you find. Ooh, cool. What we got here? Let's, let's do some, uh, groundskeeping here. Find some rupees in this, uh, unkempt environment like what is that big giant thing oh there's a sign here this might shed some light on things uh to reach the dragon Rush island head east from here oh is this like we're drag is this a dragon egg or something we do something to it guess not what happens if we just open our sail right here you just look at it <laughs> okay all right, well, that's kind of cool. Just a little, uh, you know, pit stop island. Cool. All right, let's, uh, get in. Get in. There we go. And... Off we go! Kablam! Wow, the sail is highly effective. Are we heading in the right direction? We are. Also, at the bottom, it says 7,000 by 7,000. What does that actually mean? Zoom. Oh, it's like the zoom level. Interesting. Un we're unexplored sector, we're in it right now. Semi-explored sector, I would say. Hey, we got a rupee. Didn't know you could do that. Oh, look at that. Very cool. One of the few Zelda games where you can uh, sail the high seas, I guess. Hey, there's just a dude hanging out here. I'll put away. Get out. Let's beat this guy up. Hiya! There you go, sunny boy. Oh, into the water. All right, he's done. Hey, a rupee. All right, we killed a lookout. That was pretty sweet. And what is this? Lift. Bro. Ooh, more rupees. Don't mind if I do. All right, there's just a random moblin on a on a platform there. Interesting. Ooh, more rupees. Yeah, that rupee was in a barrel. All right, I say we go to this island, we check it out. We have a grand adventure there, and hey, look, the seagulls are hanging out with us too. That's pretty cool. Like, what does this actually mean? We go between the flags, does that do anything for us? It revealed a rupee, maybe? That's interesting how they gave this like mini game of like stuff to do between islands. I guess honestly it might get a little tedious to sail between islands if it does take that long, but uh, it's kind of cool that they're giving you something to do. The Dragon Roost Island. All right. Is this a, <laughs> is this actually a dungeon though? I feel like I don't- I don't know if anything we've seen so far counts as a dungeon. Uh, high atop this island lives the spirit of the skies, a great dragon by the name of Valu. We're gonna fight Valu, guys. You must go see this dragon to request him to pull a jewel called Din's Pearl. Ask the people of Rito tribe who inhabit the island about how to see the dragon. I have a better idea. I will ask the people of the internet how to access the, the dragon. To go faster. Dude, you have a sword in your mouth. Do you know that? Uh, this is the Wind Waker. It is a baton of sort. Oh. He's giving it to me. 
power of the gods, but I do not know if it still works. Even so, it might be of some use to you. Perhaps you should try using it. Ooh, it's like a little, uh, baton. Conduct. Three-quarter time. Do not touch. Just match the rhythm. Up, down, left. Up, down, left. Am I doing it? Oh, conduct with that. Okay. Let's see. I did it wrong. Uh, uh, sorry. Up, down, left. Up, down, right. Down, right. I'm way, I'm really bad at this. Up, down, right. Up, down. But why is up not working? There we go. Very nice. That was splendid. Next is four fourth time. Uh, oh god. Up, right, left, down. Okay. I can do this. Up, right, left, down. Up, right, left, down. Up, right, left, down. Up, right, left, down. Wait. Wait, how do I do this? Wait, that's way too much. Hold on. What is going on? Okay, I see. Oh, I, I did it. What's the matter, Jay? You do not have the time exactly. Just be sure holding the proper direction. I see. Okay, so you have to hold the... the directional thing. Uh, you have to hold, like, your analog stick. Oh, man, this- this is... <laughs> I'm not musical at all. Up, down... Okay, hold on. Up. Okay, wait for this timeout. Up. Right. Left. Down. Oh, we got it. All right. That's it, Jay. That was not bad for your first time using the Wind Waker. You can also conduct with it in six-fourth time. Oh, God. I don't even want to try that one, dude. I'm not a musician. I should not be conducting anyone. At all. Okay. Don't tilt it by three-quarters time. So you can, yeah, you, you can have six, three, four, or six notes, basically, by messing with your analog stick. Alright, let's see what we can make happen on the Island of Dragons. The mail center. Well, let's go check our mail. Maybe we got our... Maybe our Amazon deliveries came in. Um, or can we even do that? What is this? It looks like a rock's gonna fall on me and crush me. Huh. There's... I think a bomb? Look, there's bombs hiding in the grass. Oh, wait. Hold on, there's a bomb over here, too. Pick up. Throw! Aw, oh, sweet. So bombs are like plants in this game. Interesting. You know what? That is, uh, that is directly taken from Super Mario Bros. 2. Um, if you go back and play Super Mario Bros. 2 on the NES, sometimes when you go to pick up, you know, plants out of the ground, they turn out to be bombs. I mean, I... I don't know if the developers for this, like, intentionally were thinking about that, but that's definitely what this makes me think of. It's a cool... Cool mechanic. That bombs are plants. In most Legend of Zelda games, Link, like, has a supply of bombs, but here I guess it's, like... Infinite. Because they just grow out of the... When, when bombs are literally growing out of the ground. <laughs> I don't know. Guess there are infinite supply of bombs. It it also limits where the player can actually use bombs in the game, so it's like that's a smart sort of game mechanic, I guess. Um Yeah, see I think over there if I threw a bomb it would and I could get over there. Okay, so there's something going on there. Anyway, let's carry up the mountain here, find our way to the dragon. Um I see. Okay, so there's that that we gotta blow up. I wonder if we can get this bomb there in time. One, two, three. Oh god! Oh, it bounced off the thing. Okay, we totally can get it there. We totally can get it there. Yeah, so bombs become far more puzzly when you don't have like an infinite supply. You can't just use them when whenever you want. So they can. The developers can strategically place the bombs. Oops. At uh, certain parts of the level, and then you only have bombs there. Ooh, this is precarious. Just hug that wall, Link. 
This would be really scary in real life. If you sneezed at the wrong time, you'd take a, a terrible tumble. And yeah, they put a gem here to indicate to you you should fall off. Of course I missed the gem. That's okay. <laughs> or not even a gem, a rupee. Oh, God! <laughs> I tell you, you're not supposed to do that part. Oh, man, we failed on every front. Miss the rupee. The bomb blew us up. That, that was just... I'm sorry you guys had to witness that. I swear I know how to play video games, sort of. Sometimes, maybe. Alright, now we have to- Oh good, my favorite thing in video games. Repeating, slow gameplay. <laughs> we just complained the whole Forbidden Fortress about how slow the gameplay was, now we get to do it again. Yeah, I don't know, it seems- it seems weird that Nintendo keeps inserting, like, slow gameplay moments into Zelda here. Maybe I'm, like, just being hypersensitive today, I'm like, I don't know, like, I'm trying to think, like, were these little, like, slow gameplay moments in you know, Link's Awakening, which was my personal favorite Zelda game uh, growing up. Oh, there we go. Uh, not necessarily even because it was the best game, although I do I do think it is one of the best Zelda games. But I had a Game Boy when I was a kid because my parents didn't want me playing video games on the TV. It was always an argument in our house about using the TV. So it's like I didn't get to play Nintendo or Super Nintendo as much as I wanted. I had a Game Boy. And I did play Super Nintendo a lot growing up. But it was mostly at friends' houses and stuff. Well, I got a little older. We got another TV. Anyway, Jay, is that you? Oh, it's the uh, the bird person from the beginning of the game who turned out as a mailman of some kind. The bird humanoids have uh, have you know good careers waiting for them with the postal service apparently, government jobs. Um, he, he's like, oh, your sister's been kidnapped. Don't worry, she'll hang in there. Hey, would you like to meet our chieftain? I told my people here about you, and all of Rito are very concerned. I'm certain the chieftain will befriend you. Oh, okay. Well, we have a, we have a friend in waiting, guys, and I think we shouldn't keep him waiting. Because you never have so many friends that okay. Well, I can't follow you, dude. You never have you know you never have too many friends in this in this world. It's always good to make a new friend. The old saying goes, you, you, you never have too many friends, and if a bird person offers you a new friend, you should take it, because having a good new friend is a, is a good thing. That old traditional saying. Alright, throw their, their ceremonial pots off a cliff before we go in. I like to insult every culture that I meet when I meet new cultures. I take anything that looks sacred and just destroy it on my way to meet their uh, leader. It's a good way of doing business. You discover the cause of great Valu's anger. Ah, hello, I'm here to help you. I'm a little child. Ah, so you are Jay, are you? Quill has told me all about you and your YouTube channel, which is very cool and everyone should subscribe to. A troubling tale indeed. I insist that you let us know if there's anything we can do to help you. We shall do everything in our power to assist you. However, in the meantime, we have a problem of our own to deal with. When you arrived on the island, did you notice a raging dragon? It's a little bit of a problem we've got. Uh, we of the Rito tribe are profoundly connected to the sky. We do so by the graces of the spirit, Valu. When Rito reaches adulthood, he or she journeys to the top of the dragon roof, receives a scale from the great dragon. It is a scale that enables the Rito to grow his or her wings. Oh, interesting. So these people depend on dragon scales to fly. Once the gentle Valu has grown violent and unpredictable, we can no longer approach him. All right. He might be on a bender, guys. He's been taking an awful lot of his scales. He might feel underappreciated. Um, so they want me to go and tame the dragon. As Chieftain Arito, my first responsibility is to solve this problem. My apologies, but I must ask you to wait until this is done. Uh, he's like, yeah, no problem. My sister's only kidnapped by an evil wizard seeking to destroy all of the world. Let me help you get your children the power of flight. That seems important. Um, I feel certain that Princess Kamala would be open, would open his heart. Prince Kamala and speak freely. Okay. Let's go find this Prince Kamali guy. And uh, move on to the next step. Let me be direct. My son Kamali is one of... Uh, the age to earn his wings, yet he is weak in some ways, and in light of the current situation, he may just give up on ever getting them. What say you? Will you share some of your courage with my son? 
Will you meet with my son? Yes. Sure. I thank you. We shall do our best to solve our problem as quickly as possible so that we may better help you with yours. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours kind of thing. A young girl named Med Medley is holding it for me. Would you like to talk to her? I'm counting on you. All right, well, rather than wandering around aimlessly, let's see what the powers of the internet tell me to do in this scenario. All right, there's a couple people to see. We get a, we get a mail delivery bag. We're an honorary male elf now. So let us go and talk to the... This game is all about sacks, by the way. We have so many various different sacks, and every time we get one, it's like, look at the item in the sack, and then press Y, X, or Z in order to assign it to, a, a, you know, a button. Like this, this game is very sack-dependent. Every sack holds a certain number of items. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, let's uh, go talk to the couple of folks. See if we can get to a dungeon. Guys, we've been playing this game for like, and keep in mind, I, I've been playing this with the help of walkthroughs. You know, like if you didn't play this with walkthroughs, like when would you ever get to a dungeon? I'm actually kind of confused at why we haven't seen any action yet. This game has been so light on fights. Is this, is this an adventure game? If so, I'm kind of disappointed. Honestly, Legend of Zelda games, I know they have story and characters to meet and stuff, but I want action, damn it. Um, you're J. Okay, blah, 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 blah. She gives you a letter. This little DuckTales girl. And you're supposed to deliver it to the prince. I'm just, you know, we're, we're cutting, we're cutting to the, I was gonna say cutting the cheese right now. <laughs> that's, that's, that, that is not what we're doing. We're cutting to the chase right now. We're, we're skipping all this worthless story. Oh, no, 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 go away. Uh, we're at a point where dialogue no longer matters to us. And we are just here to, uh, is this where we need to go? Yep. We're just here. I'm just following walkthroughs at this point to get through this story stuff as fast as we can so that we can maybe see a dungeon before we wrap up here. But I mean, this video is going on so long, we're going to have to cut it soon. But, I mean, if we get to a dungeon, we get to a dungeon, I guess. All right. Uh, we need to give him our letter. Got. So, go ahead and assign that. Give him the letter. Then he'll like say some stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. And we're gonna skip as much of this as we can. Like, look at all that dialogue. Go through, okay, whatever. Um, and then the walkthrough tells us to go up and sort some mail. And then after that, we can move on. Although, I think we can actually skip sorting the mail, to be honest, because I think it just gets you rupees, and we don't have any value for currency anymore. Since we are here to... This is where we want to go. Since we are here to fight dragons. So let's just, let's just skip anything that isn't essential. Oh, look at this. Kind of cool. There's, like, a fire in the air, literally. Um, okay, go down here. We're supposed to meet that girl. Okay, hold on. All right, I guess we're supposed to go down. We. Oh, look, there is a girl down here. The walkthrough never lies. Hey, what's up? Hey, you actually came. I'm really sorry for bringing you to such a dangerous place. I had to. I wouldn't have been asked if I didn't. Need help desperately. See, this place used to be a spring surrounded by a beautiful pond. Peaceful and lovely, but then the great Valu, he became so angry, and in his rage, he shook the mountain, and his boulder crashed down, plunged into the spring. Um, but where is my mind? Tell me, what, how is Prince Kamali? Oh, that doesn't sound right. Not at all. I may be partially to blame for the bad turn of the prince's taken. Prince Kamali's grandmother, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> When she is finished talking, pick her up and stand on the small rock behind you. All right. Time to shut up, lady. All right, so you pick her up. Go onto this rock over here. And then you wait until the wind is blowing in the right direction, and then you just chuck her. See the way the wind is blowing. Wrong direction, wrong direction. Now, huzzah! That's kind of a cool little puzzle. I don't mind that at all. Thank you! 
I think now I'll be able to climb the dragon roost and meet with the great Valu. Don't worry, I'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, you go talk to an enraged dragon by yourself. I'm sure it will be just fine. Nothing bad's gonna happen to you. Now we're gonna have to rescue two girls. You're gonna give me an item? He gave you an empty bottle. <laughs> what a great reward. <laughs> Thanks. For nothing, I guess. Don't tell anyone I'm climbing the dragon. Th I thought we were gonna have to go fight the dragon. Um, all right, now we're supposed to get out our bottle and we're gonna use it to co collect some water. There we go. You've got a bottle with water. Try pouring it on something that looks dry and withered. All right, is that code for something? Oh, apparently, now actually we can use that bottle right away. Makes sense. This game is like way more like, this is like an old school Sierra adventure game, to be honest. Like there's a lot of puzzle solving, you know, using items and objects. So if we put water on these plants, throw into a bomb. Here's my guess. Just throw it at that thing. Kaboom! Didn't work. Try this again. Get our aim right. Like, hard to like. Oh god! <laughs> I was gonna say it's hard to like see what you're doing. Got a bomb. Huh. Oh, there we go. That was a perfect throw right there. Look at that. We're restoring springs and all sorts of stuff. Oh, it's flooding, and now we'll be able to swim over. And get over there ourselves. I see. Okay, so maybe maybe we can actually go into this dungeon and fight a dragon after all. Be kind of cool. Yep. And off we go, swimming in dirty, ashy, disgusting water. Yep. And into the dungeon. You know, if she had just given us the thing of water, we could have gone with her. She wouldn't have had to go by herself to do this. Also, what is happening here? Huh. What, what am I even looking at here? So there's lava. What do these do? Lift up. Okay. I feel like you gotta throw these bombs into these things. Like that. <clears throat> I did it. Huh, that was easy. Um, and next one. That? No. This is a bit of a puzzle solving game here at this point. Huh. Oh, come on, that was close. I wonder, like, how precise you need to make these, uh, these throws. Go, like. Go, God! Man, this is actually pretty hard. I wonder if I can just do it from, like, right over here. Oh, God! Did I die? <laughs> he just wakes up with a burnt butt. Um, oh, we wake up over here. Okay. So, let's uh, give this another shot here. Uh, okay, we got the the one is still down, so we just got to get this other one. This up. Yeah. Huh. Okay, you don't throw it nearly far enough. Yeah. You do have to kind of, like, jump over and... It takes me like so long to line up the shot, like the bomb, uh... Oh god! It takes me so long to line up the shot, the bomb just blows up in the air before I even like get there. Ugh! God, lining this up's brutal! Oh, we got it, okay, there we go. There we go. I like how you have like the puzzle solved sound effect, but I knew what I had to do long before I could actually do it. All right, we are fine. Are we finally in a dungeon? Are we gonna get to fight some monsters, or is it just more talking, socialization, and puzzle solving? Ugh. Socialization. Ugh. Why do they put all this conversation and discussion into a video game? Sick. This clearly is some kind of puzzle. I guess you're supposed to look at your items and figure out what you have and do something. 
Oh, apparently you can grab. I feel like that was never trained, but whatever. I guess maybe it was, and I didn't pay attention. Anyway, welcome to the first dungeon. Two hours into the game, you actually get a dungeon. Um, I have no idea what the rest of this game is like. I don't know if you get, there's lots of dungeons and, and stuff like that to explore, but <laughs> another point off for making you spend so long before you actually get to the chase. I feel like um, in Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, I do remember you start the game off without a sword. So you do have to play a little bit with just a shield, but it was just a small section and there was no stealth element. And after that, you got your sword right away. And before you knew it, you were going through a forest, you were going to your first, like your first dungeon is one of your first stops in the game. I feel like that's the pace a Legend of Zelda game should go on. So, you know, reading that this game, oh, this is where I came from. Reading that this game did not do as well as they had hoped and it made them change direction for Twilight Princess. Like, the graphical style and the world itself I think are really cool. But I do actually think that they went way overboard with like characters and plot and just forgot that like the main thing you want to do in a Zelda game is action. You want to get to the action quickly, you know? Like, I'm not here to read about the life stories of every character I encounter, nor am I here to play a Sierra adventure game, puzzle game. A little bit of puzzle solving is good, but like, let me let me get to some gameplay, you know? Um, ooh, rocks. There you go, breaking that. Oh, rupee in that rock. Let's see. There's a locked door there. That's where we came from. Oh my God. There's something over here too. What is this? Oh, wait, these aren't lit. Okay, so I want to light those on fire. Oh, even more puzzle solving. Actually, apparently you can pick these sticks up and light them in the torches. Wouldn't have even thought of that. Okay. Here we go. You made a torch. And swing. There we go. Swing. Oh, don't just bash your face into... <laughs> Link! Jesus, kid. Oh, man. I, I don't like how when you're standing there right near a wall, you go to attack and you just bash your face into it. Like, come on, game developers. You know that's not what I wanted to do. All right, we got We solved our first puzzle. Maybe I'm just super dense. Because, like, without the powers of the internet, I would. this would take me, like, five hours to figure everything out. Okay, we can't do that either. Can we just bust our way through this? Yes, we can. All right, look at look at this precarious dungeon. How did that little bird girl make it through all of this? I'm like scared for her. Thanks. Right, so, okay, that's a locked door. Let me go ahead casually this way. Oh god. Okay. Well, now we're down this way. Uh, yank this out. Ah, we can. There we go. Climb that. All right. Oh. Um. Oh God. There's a lot of platforming in this, surprisingly. Bats that are facing me, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if I should spend time trying to kill the bats or not. Just waste everyone's time. Oh, that bomb does work, man. That blew up a rock like a thousand times bigger than it. All right. Another puzzle room. These, those are water, right? Oh, look, they create sort of cooled spots. That's cool. Do those things melt eventually? Throw a bunch of these. Oh, when you throw one in, eventually it sort of evaporates. Okay. You don't have infinite time. Get this chest. Kind of a cool mechanic. What do we got? It's a map. A map. Yeah, I called it. They always give you a dungeon map early on in every dungeon. All right, so now we can get a little uh, taste of three floors, eh? All right. I'm in. You know what? I'm in it for the boss. Boss fight! Oh my butt! <laughs> 
Uh, I'm in this for the boss fight. These dungeons feel way more puzzle solvy than like the old Nintendo and Game Boy uh, Legend of Zelda dungeons did. You know, like they're not very action based. Like I'm just shocked at how few enemies you kill and how every room is just a puzzle room. And, and there's an enemy, by the way. Speak of the devil. But, like why even bother fighting him? Because he's completely unessential. In the original Legend of Zelda, you get locked in a room and there'd be like four enemies that you have to uh, defeat. And uh, before you before you defeated them, um, you couldn't do anything. And like this game has interesting mechanics for like fighting with the sword, but like one enemy, there we go. That's it. And we're not gonna see another enemy for like three more rooms. Like it's a very odd balance of, uh, of enemies in this game. I don't know, like again, you know, I, I, I didn't play all the uh, Zelda games uh, between in the NES and this version, so it makes me wonder. Like, did did Nintendo did Zelda games just become less? Uh, up there. Oh, that actually worked. Did did uh, Zelda games just become sort of less action based um, over time, or is this just an anomaly? This one here. Oh, let's bust this thing up too. Oh yeah, what did we get? Some red chew jelly. Ew, we're gonna eat those uh, gelatinous goo guys from red choo choos. There's exhaustion. Right, what do we got? It's a compass. Oh, it's a key. Actually, that's useful. There was a door that needed a small key back in the lava area. That's good. Keep going forward though. Oh, hello. All right, maybe there's more action. We just hadn't gotten to it yet. Oh yeah, that was a sweet attack. Oh, give me that ruby. Mind if I do. All right, what do we got going on here? Just a big column of lava shooting into the sky. Cool. Bombs on the wall. What do you deal with that? Oh God, I <laughs> fell off into... You know what? They're so forgiving with lava. In the stealth level, if you get caught, you get sent to like, uh, you know, uh, whatever, the jail. But in this, it's like you literally fall in lava and it's like, eh, just spawn him right next to wherever he hit the lava. Who cares? You know, like it's, it's, it's hilarious the night and day difference between like lava versus being caught by a pig guard. I think if I can hit those bombs. Oh, oh yeah, there we go. That's what I was trying to do. See, I can figure out... See, when the secrets aren't incredibly obscure, I can kind of make heads or tails of them. The, the story I'm sticking to. Got stuff going on in here, too. Wait, is this where I came from? I think this is where I started out the level, actually. You can throw human skulls. Dark and macabre. Um... Isn't that... It is kind of silly how when you're at a wall, if you're holding forward, it makes you roll rather than open the door. Because it's like, okay, if I'm standing at a door and I press A, I don't want to roll into it. Like, come on. Be serious, game. Be serious. <laughs> I feel like I'm finding all these tiny little flaws in Wind Waker. And, like, if you love the game, um, you know, again, I, I, I don't mean to say that these flaws are, like, making an unplayable game, but it's, like, all these, like, little things. I'm like, why did they do this and why did they do that? And... You know, like tiny little annoyances. Um, and it, I don't know. I feel like Nintendo could do better. Puzzle there, I don't know how to solve We'll come back to that later. There's a second route, so let's just give that a try first. Oh, that guy was like hiding in a chest. And all he could do, his best idea was I'm going to hide in that, uh, I'm going to hide in a vase. When Link comes around the corner, I'm going to jump out and then get mushed to death. Add to a fire stick. Light this on fire. Oh, there we go. There we go. Press this button. Now open that. Uh huh. See, I'm putting two and two together. Figuring some stuff out. Oh, look. I forgot that we were on an island, actually, because we were basically in hell in that mountain there. Okay. There you go. Oh, off the mountain he goes. He's gone. 
That guy was uh, not a very effective guard. One of the more ineffective moblins that have been trained in recent years. In fact, oh my god, the, I didn't even realize the, the step fire that came on the uh, came on the ladder. It's a baby one of the evil birds. Cool. Okay, now we have to do this. Oh, look at this. We actually have to climb ourselves. Don't get roasted. I like how he's got a clear frown on his face. He does not want to be doing this. Go, 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 go. All right. Now, we need a bomb. Oh, God. Hold on. Get up there, Link. Oh, God. Link, get up there. And hug the wall. Hug the wall. Oh, my God. Wait, what? What's supposed to do here? Is there a bomb over there that I totally missed? Oops. Uh, huh. Apparently, there's a way to hang off this cliff. Oh, there we go. Sidle over. That's weird. I kind of thought maybe I could do that, and I was trying to do it, and he wouldn't do it. And so I was like, okay, I'm obviously missing a bomb or something. Nope. Just, uh, unobvious controls. Grab this thingy. Toss it there. Ah, there we go. Another secret door. Legend of Zelda does make you feel smart about solving puzzles. I mean, they're not complicated puzzles, but um, it does make you feel smart for solving the puzzles, and they are usually fun puzzles. Okay, let's pull this one down one, because we got to. Pull this one down one. I need to do math in my head. Yeah, I think that's all we need to do. Good enough. I wonder if it's possible to really screw that puzzle up. Probably hard to. There's some mice running around. Okay. Um, ooh, we're getting a message from our cell phone. Jay, have you seen any filthy thieving rats around? I know they're annoying, but keep your wits about you. They are only rats. If you spread bait near the nest, they may share their store of treasure with you. Eh, whatever. If it's for rupees, I honestly don't care at this point. Hey! That one rat stole my rupee, though. Jerks. Okay, now... Oh, maybe, um... Maybe one of the rats has a key, actually. And I'll, I will need to, uh, eat it. This is gonna be bait, right? It's not gonna be a key. Compass. Okay, so we do need to bait the rats. Uh... Fuck this. Oh god, hey! You jerk. Oh, I see why it's important to kill rats. There you go. Where's the other one? So, actually, we the rats probably don't have a key. Crap. Instead... It's annoying how the climb and the throw button are the same button. <laughs> I don't want to throw my weapon. I want to get a torch. Then I want to come over here. Oh no! Okay, pick this up. Climb. Then I want to... Oh god. Turn around. Turn. Go. And throw! No! Oh god. Ugh, controls. Bad controls. Okay, oh, the thing, stupid thing went out. No, no. Look, he's facing the wrong way. Throw it, you dick. <laughs> All right. This time. Throw! Wow, that was actually a good throw. I was skeptical it would make it. The aiming controls in this are weird because, like, you use the C-stick to, like, move your camera, but it doesn't affect Link at all. So it's like, it almost doesn't matter where the camera's facing. You're not aiming in that direction. I don't know. 
As much as I enjoy this game, there are all these little annoyances that are just annoying. <laughs> like, just little, tiny little, like, bad decisions the developers made, like, that makes the game, like, slightly harder than it should be, or slightly more difficult to control compared to a modern control scheme game. I don't know. Anyway, we, we made it pretty high up here, by the way. Oh, hello, bird. Kill you in your nest. Oh, and take your key? What you're protecting? I felt bad for a second killing that bird, but... You know what? We're gonna let you live, bird. Killing wildlife for no reason is kind of... Look at that. Go ahead and, uh... Take one of these, light it on fire, now we have a torch. Right, let's run for it. Oh, look at all these guys. Can we attack these guys? Oh, damn. Get away from me, bats! Get away, get away, get away! Or what are they called in Zelda? They're called keys. That's the name of the bat, bad guy. Alright. What do we got? A joy pendant. It keeps your spoils in a bag. The pendants are said to flock to those who spread joy, like butterflies. Okay, I'm gonna use a joy pendant because... We're probably not gonna play this game that much longer. Playing for so long. Um, okay, what the hell do joy pendants do? Okay, the, taking this out here won't do anything. Oh, well, that's <laughs> very helpful game. Very helpful. All right, let's just burn, the, burn this place to the ground. Carry on forward here. Do do do. Else in this room? Nope. Yeah. Get out of here, stick. All right, we've got to be getting close to the dragon now. Um, wonder why anyone would want to plug that up, and I wonder why you'd want to blow it up. There you go. What does that actually do? Anything? What just happened? Oh, it's a teleporter! Oh, interesting. Huh. Okay, that's a terrible camera angle right there. Oh, and I'm getting hit by- Oh, and I'm getting hit by a thing. Okay. Oh my god, I'm gonna die here! From these dicks. Oh, look at this camera angle! Okay, the camera work in this, the auto camera sucks. <laughs> terrible. Oh my god. Going in pots like that, that are warp zones, 100% also reminds me of Super Mario Brothers 2. This game honestly feels like it it has elements of Mario 2. It's kind of interesting, like that. I like it. I haven't seen like going in pots as warp zones or bombs that are plants since Mario Brothers 2, and it's like kind of cool. All right. I think we're in the end game now though. If this is not the boss, I don't know what is. They're giving you a warp to the beginning of the level. Like this does seem like we're we must be getting near the end here. Kill this guy. Come on! Hua! Hua! There you go, buddy. Okay, now we do need to light that on fire. Can his sword no? I guess it would be silly if his sword lit on fire. Is there anything in here that lights on fire? I don't see anything, actually. Well, let's try climbing the ladder and see what we see. Maybe something will emerge. Ah, there's a bunch of sticks. Far corner of the room. I'm listing. Yep. Oh, one landed. Oh, if they both landed up there, I bet I'd be screwed. Be good that that didn't happen actually. Alright, get our torch. Torch that thing. Ooh. So every dungeon in Legend of Zelda usually gives you a unique item that you need to use to beat the boss, and then it also unlocks more of the world because now you get a new ability. So I wonder if this will finally be our item. You got the treasure chart. Open the sea chart. Check this map. After viewing this chart with Y, open to the spot where the treasure lies will light up. Um, okay, so it's a treasure map. That's good. Are we not going to get an item to fight the boss? That'll be very different from most Legend of Zelda's if that is true. Um, oh, hey, why is this door still locked? Okay, apparently there might be a hidden moblin in one of- hiding in one of these jars. 
And until we get him out and kill him, we can't leave this room. Which is pretty ridiculous. Why, why is he just hiding? Hello, Moblin. Where are you, dude? Where are you? Hello. Earth to Moblins. Like, you better not be in that thing up there. I can't even, can't even get it. Oh, there he is! Finally, I busted every single uh, thing in this room. Wow, that is incredibly foolish. <laughs> and now, can we leave the room now? Wait, what? Oh my god, is there another Moblin? Okay, there's only like two vases left in the entire level. Is this a Moblin? No. Oh, oh my god, it is! Okay, let go. Fight this guy. So, there were hidden moblins in vases that until you kill, you're not allowed to leave the room. Now we can leave the room. <laughs> Minus another point for Nintendo. I don't know about that puzzle either. This seems like needlessly wasting my time. Give me monsters to fight, damn it. Why all this cryptic nonsense? I don't know. Um, look at that guy, eh? Oh, I made him curl up into a ball. Okay. Oh god. I have to attack this thing. There we go, we killed him. Yeah, I think I have to throw the water on top of that, uh, volcanic, uh, spout of lava, and then ride it up. I'm trying to, that's what I was trying to do the first time, but I just kind of missed, honestly. I think we're lined up well. I'm gonna wait for it to bubble up again. Waiting, 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 waiting. Okay, go. Go! Alright, we're riding this all the way to the end of the line. Oh, we're, we're there. Oh, God. <laughs> we almost didn't make the jump. The camera angle kind of screwed me up there. Wasn't sure what I was looking at. Um, okay, what do we got going on in this little room? I feel like Zelda's like a series of puzzle rooms, eh? You know, like, that's kind of like... I guess it's kind of exactly what it is. Oh, we're we're totally at the end here. We just got to figure out a way to, uh... Do this. Those do nothing. Oh! There's totally just a bomb right there. I was like, huh, how do you break rocks without a bomb? I see. So, uh, oh, another warp vase. That's good. Go bomb over here. What do we got over here? Oh, another door. All right. We've got to be near the end. That that door across the little, little lava pond in the previous room we just left looked like sort of a boss monster door. Oh, and there's the dragon. He doesn't even look mad. He looks injured more than anything, actually. Hey, look, and it's another one of... I bet these things... I bet this is how you, you leave the dungeon. You, you can, like, fly or swing around, like, Indiana Jones style with a whip. And you can, like, lock it on there and swing. There's gonna be some new item, mark my words. We leave this dungeon. I feel bad for the dragon now. Totally not his fault that he's being a dick. Probably doesn't feel very good. Um, oh, there's a... They, they captured her. You jerks. You just wanted to talk to the dragon. Okay, well, don't worry. Because I will rescue you. Huzzah! Spin attack! Spin attack! Jump attack! I got ya! Oh god, I think they got me. Jump attack! Oh yeah. And then spin attack! Or something. Just slash wildly at him. Alright, we got him. Oh, this guy's dropping in the big boys. Reinforcements are coming in. Finally, we get our vengeance on these guard guys. Yeah. I'll get you spin attack, man. Oh, he dives to spin attack. Or like just totally didn't hit him. Boom. Get in the corner, bud. Dominate you guys. Hey, we saved her. 
Now, before I talk to you, let me just pick up my loot. I know you were in that dungeon or whatever. You got the skull necklace. Keep it in your spoils bag. This rather off-putting accessory would appear to be of little value, but shown to the right person, apparently a great work. Hey, what do these uh, butterfly things do, by the way? Taking this out here won't do anything. <laughs> butterfly necklaces are useless. Life lessons, guys. Don't buy a bunch of butterfly necklaces. They're not useful. Jay, you came to rescue me. Oh, thank you. I have uh, to tell you what I found out. Some creature is doing awful things to the great Valour's tail. That's why he's so angry. Oh, so he's sitting on a volcano and somebody is like munching on his bum. All right, well, let's go in and stop that monster from hurting the dragon. I'll go tell everyone what's happening. Hey, Jay, use this to get out of here. It's what I used to get this far. It's a device Rito used before we evolved wings. It's going to be some kind of swing shot. The grappling hook. Yeah, see, told you. Four people had wings, set it to one of the buttons. Stop telling me that for every item. <laughs> I'm not stupid. I'm not smart, but I'm not stupid. Game. All right, so. We have a new item. Can overtake the butterflies. Huh. Gonna aim it. Shoot it. All right. Gotcha. What is up here? Um, grab this branch with the grab hook. You can swing over there and get out of this area. Okay. So we go like this. And then we go like that. Wait, what? Whoa! Wee! Ah, oh, that's cool. They give you a few practice bosses. There we go. Wee! Off we go. Smash our way through this. Smashy, smashy. Okay, now let's go help this dragon, man. Because there's one thing I hate to see, and it's a dragon in peril. I thought the dragon was the bad guy. Those are my own prejudices. My own prejudice. Okay, nice little animation every time. God. There's like multiple treasure chests here. Can't just leave these unopened. You got the knight's crest to keep it in your spoils bag. All those who are skilled on the ways of the sword know to value the crest such as this. And what else do we got? Rupees! A $10 bill rupee. Oh, we probably need to kill this thing to uh, get the. Uh, um, oh no. How do, how do we actually kill this thing? Ah! Oh, we got it. Oh god. Oh, we got it again. Oh, it's injured. Yeah, I don't know how we did it. But we did it. And I keep banging my face on the, the rocks because my guy's stupid. <laughs> stupid hit detection crap. Um. Wait, did we even have to do that? Did she give us a key? How do we open this? Okay, apparently we don't have the monster key, so there's like one. We, we jumped the gun. We jumped the gun. I was getting a little too anxious to get to the boss fight. There's a little bit more left to do in this dungeon. Man, this is a long video here today. I feel like I'm giving Wind Waker here the real VIP treatment. Okay, so over here, I did see this, but I thought this would just be a fast way to like exit the level when you were all done, but apparently you have to go this way. I'm gonna have to backtrack a little here. Oh God thought we were done for. Um, here we go. And swing it on through. I guess it did seem kind of weird to uh, give you an item and then just end the dungeon right away. Um, okay, I guess I'm not close enough to that. Right, here we go. Because we did see one of these much earlier in the dungeon. And I guess I kind of assumed it would be we'd backtrack in the dungeon if we wanted like a special item, but I think that's where like the boss key was. But yeah, there's 
the lava in there. Oh god! I just fell to my own death. Was I supposed to do that? Um. Oh, that's crazy. Come on, Moblin. Let's do it. Uh oh, that bridge is like falling apart. <laughs> um. Oh, more Moblins. Don't mind if I do, Moblin scumbags. There you go. Um. Okay, I think you. Oh, hello. There we go. Now we're supposed to go down there. Now we want to fall down there. Okay. Then we just cut these ropes. Oh my god! <laughs> or not. I think we're supposed to cut these ropes. Kill these moblins again. Make sure the treasure chest appears. Down, Moblin. Right. Now. Oh, man, here we go. Wait, that didn't do anything. Oh, there we go. All right. There's your chest. We got... What? A joy pendant? I thought... I thought we'd get something far more impressive. Hmm. All right. Well, now I'm confused as to where we need to go, actually. Um, okay. I guess we'll just go here. And, uh, do the same thing here. Spin attack! There seems to be stuff. Oh, wait, that's, uh, whoa! <laughs> oh. We're in like a new area here. Okay. I was gonna say, I see like warp pipes and stuff, or warp uh, vases or whatever that we've opened up much earlier in the game. You need to explore here. Man, this this dragon's volcano here is enormous. Well, let's, there's a grapple hook thing here. Grapple that. What happens? Whee! Oh. Don't let go. Okay, you wanna... Oh man, there's a bat behind me. Trying to get me. Can't see because of the camera. <laughs> the terrible camera angle screwed me. Oh, flipping hell, man. Oh, I'm still... Here. Okay, bad camera angle screwed me again. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. I want to kind of go like, where is that platform? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, not a big, not a big fan of the camera angles in this game. I feel like the default camera angles really do not uh, help you out very much. I've like fallen off a number of pits because the camera angles do not, you know, update in a very good way. Okay, up the ladder we go. Up the ladder we go. Up the ladder. Thing should still be unlocked, please. Yes. Okay. Well, I see a place to grapple, so we'll do it. Grapple. Chink. Wee. Okay. Now what? Did that actually accomplish? Oh, maybe I'm supposed to like grapple to the left there, actually. Grapple onto this. And can you swing left or right? Like, look, there's something over there. Go, swing the other way, Link. I'm like holding the directional pad. The other way, this does not help. What am I supposed to do in this room? Oh, there we go. All right, more unintuitive controls. <laughs> we oh god, I almost didn't even make that. All right, off we go, off we go. Now what? Oh, grapple this too. 
Wow, there's like a whole side to this. I thought we were almost done the dungeon, but it turns out there's like a whole side we hadn't even considered yet. And now we're like literally in hell itself. Oh. That is a... Uh... Oh, get him. When he reveals his eye, that's when you get him. Oh, then you let him have it. Boom, destroyed. Oh, we do need some hearts, actually. Oh, there's another one. All right, come on. Okay, so when he opens his pincers, that's when you can, like, attack him. And that's, I think, when he's about to attack you, too. Oh, and there's just a switch here. I was like, oh, how many of these guys do I have to kill before it opens up? There's just a switch. Oh, wait. I think I see. So you gotta turn these guys into a ball, and then you gotta drop them on that thing. Yeah. Uh, lift. There we go. We have to like actually figure out how to like throw them and land him on it. Oh, come on. <laughs> Oh, no! Come on. There you go. One. Two. Three. Oh, come on. This, he's, like, fighting near a wall. It's like the mechanics of the game make me bounce off walls. <laughs> so stupid. Okay. Drop. There we go. There's a drop button. I figured it out. Now we can open this. Open it instead of rolling into it, you moron! <laughs> Jesus! Okay, finally! After like three hours of playing, we have the key to our first dungeon boss. Go ice this guy. While the day's still young. Oh, what the... Some crazy bat just flew at me. Funny thing is, I do not remember how to get to the actual dungeon boss. I'm kind of lost. So I hope it's semi-clear <laughs> how to get there. Oh god. The bat. Die! Oh, it's a fire bat! Where you go? No, lock on the bat, you moron! <laughs> Jeez. Alright. There we go, we got this. Jink! Now we're gonna turn, rotate. Okay, then we, no, 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 no. Go, we keep going, and jump. Oh, not nearly far enough. Thought I was dead. Okay, and now, oh, you go down. Get away, you get away. No one else, let's just, Hurry up and make this, uh... Oh, shoot. Not what I meant to do. Hurry up and make this gap before we, uh, all get killed here. Jump! Oh, that's not nearly far enough! I thought we could actually make that. Oh, maybe we can just go back down from whence we came? And go up that, like, fire elevator. Yeah, that might be the fastest way, actually. To get back up to the dragon. Oh man, we just barely made that. Okay, and the exit is over here. Yeah, this is the way, I think. Oh no, wait, no it isn't. Oh, okay. I was, honestly, I was walking around for a while, stuck. Confused on how to get out of here. Turns out the exit is right in front of me, but man. Man, oh man. They do not make this game easy. There we go. I mean, I guess you can, I guess it's all so simple. You can figure it out with like a little bit of patience, but like, here we go. Here we go. Here we go, elevator to victory. Right, let's get the hell out of here. And let's go finally kill us a boss. All right. Use our master key here. 
to unlock the boss. Let's see if we can figure out how to beat this guy. No walkthroughs. I've used a lot of walkthrough to get through this dungeon and get to this part of the game. Let's see if we can actually fight this dude. Um, there's the dragon's tail. And what is bugging him? Oh, that thing. Okay, yeah, that would that would be a, a small annoyance to any, uh... Why doesn't the dragon just leave? Why is it just sitting there continually in pain? My question. Um... Go! Did I just hit him in the eyeball? Go! He's, like, shutting his eye. Oh, God! Okay, hold on. Is there anywhere I can go? Oh, God. Ow. There's not. Okay. Boom. 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 Okay. What am I supposed to do here? I'm on fire, by the way. I try running around. Oh, hello. Okay, that does nothing. Oh, I jumped into lava, I think. Where am I? <laughs> That does nothing. So you can throw things at his eye. Presumably to beat this guy, it's like the uh, little guys. Wait, what if I like hold it on him? I'm not entirely clear how to fight this guy. All right, walk through time. Alrighty, so I looked it up. And apparently trying to attack him... Oh, oh god. Is not what you should be doing. And instead... What you want to do... Is attack... Or not even attack, but... You want to, like, hit the dragon tail behind him. Like that. There we go. And then I don't know what this does. Pulls on the dragon and pisses him off. Wee! Okay, now... Now what, though? Oh, that lands on the guy. And cracks his skull. Now what? Um... Oh, maybe he was vulnerable at that moment? I see, so it's like you grab onto this. And then you swing. Whee! And then this will land on the dude. And then you smash him in the facey facey. Maybe? Or maybe you just have to do that a couple of times to him? Like that's all there is to, to the fight? Let's do that one more time. Like he seems to be getting damaged. <laughs> Okay, so this is the entire fight. This is like less of a fight and more of like a puzzle solving uh, endeavor. Is this all that, that happens? Yeah, he's like getting more and more busted. He's like, stop landing on me. Oh, now he's vulnerable. Okay, maybe now we can finally fight him. Where is he? Can we, uh... Do this thing. Oh god. Oh no, he's gonna kill me. Oh god. Oh god. No link. No link. Okay. Hurry. Aim at the dragon's tail and fire. Oh, we got this. You're getting you're getting creamed now, buddy. Prepare to get the wrath of a dragon on you. Oh no, it does nothing. Oh god. Oh no 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 roll! Oh my god, we need- we need life! Well, I think there's hearts in here. Thank god. Okay. Huh! Oh no. Throw the things at him! Hit him in the eyeball! Oh! There we go! Hit him! Hit him! Hit him! Hit him! Oh god, I landed in lava! Okay, hold on. We need to get, uh, we need to get health. I was gonna say, it's like, all we have to do is smash his- smash him, him a couple of times with the- with the dragon's butt rock. Well, let's get a few more of these. 
and then we'll fight him. Okay. Boom! Hit him in the eyeball! Hit him in the eyeball! Let him have it! There we go, alright! Not too bad of a boss fight, overall. Kind of action-y. There we go, alright, and he... ...evaporates... ...in the lava. Yeah, we did it! We beat a boss in Legend of Zelda, the Wind Waker. We successfully... ...woke the wind, I guess. Ooh, we get a, a heart piece, as is traditional in Zelda games when you beat a boss. And all the lava now hardens up? Or something? I guess it hardens up? Wait, what is happening? Uh, probably looks like a little teleportation zone. You got a heart container. Life energy has been increased by one plus your life gauge. Okay. What happens if we hop in here? Does the wind take us? Oh, look at this. We're gonna fly up into the dragon's butt. <laughs> Whoop! Like, zoop! Right up the top of the volcano. Or something to that effect. There's the dragon. He's like, hey, my tail feels way better. He's like, I'm gonna stop being a dick to everybody. Alright, well, we successfully beat a boss in Wind Waker. We've been playing this game for, like, three hours, and this is after I played it for, like, almost two hours yesterday, too, because my footage got lost. I'm Wind Wakered out. For our little look at Wind Waker here, I mean, I, you know, for, sometimes for these bigger games, it is nicer to play them longer, but honestly, I'm kind of curious how many of you guys actually watch this to the end, because I happen to know that the longer my videos get, the the less people actually watch it, so. Um, you know what, I, I still have no regrets about playing this game. It's an interesting game, I will say. Um, I do like the art style, I like the world that's going on here. I think, ultimately, I was a little disappointed that there's so much puzzle solving and dialogue and platforming and talking, and not as much, like, traditional Zelda gameplay. Like, when I play the- when I think of Zelda, I think of the original Legend of Zelda, like Link's Awakening, Link to the Past, and there's just, like, a lot of action to be had, and here it felt a lot more like puzzle solving, exploring, dialogue, you know, even the boss fight was a little more puzzly than traditional Zelda games, I feel. Even though, you know, there are puzzle elements to every boss fight in a Zelda game. So, um, while I do love the art style in the world and what they were going for here, I also feel like if you are a more traditional Zelda fan like me, probably one of the 2D Zelda games is going to appeal to you more. Even like the Minish Cap or something like that, I think is more traditional Zelda than this. Um, or even like the Four Swords, which we played, which is also a GameCube game. Um, that one hearkened me back to the Zelda gameplay I was looking for more, I think, than what we got here. Again, cool world, cool stuff to explore. If you're more into this style of gameplay, then you're really going to enjoy this game. But if you're a traditional Zelda fan, I think you're going to skew more. You're, you're, you're going to skew slightly away from this game. But hey, those are my thoughts. Um, at the end of the day, being a Zelda game, honestly, it might still be a game that you want to play before you die. But what do you guys think? What is your opinion of this game? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Do you have your own thoughts and opinions? If so, feel free to share them in the comments down below. And as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around to the end. Because again, I'm, I'm going to be really amazed about folks who did stick around to the end. Um, how many of them are there out there? Because this is going to be a long video. But uh, screw it. We're going to put it up anyway. Um, regardless of what you think of this game or what you think of my opinion of it, I hope you guys did have fun. If you did, don't forget to like the video and that stuff. And other than that, I will catch you in the next one. Until next time, my friends, you stay frosty and uh, you take care of yourselves. And uh, we'll see you soon. Alrighty, guys. Peace.